Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. It's beginning to look a lot like turnabout. I was about to say, like, we're not <laughs> we're near going Christmas. to turn about beginnings. Hey, when we upload it, it might be. Welcome, it might be. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations, everybody. Marty and I are super excited to start case four. I'm we, excited, at least. I want to see this. All right. Well, it's episode four, and turnabout beginnings. Seat. This one is a little different from okay, some of the other I, cases. Okay, I want to see the opening. All right. Three, Let's two, one, this. go. All right. What's going to happen? Is it going to be like... It's you. The girl. Let her go. Oh my gosh! This is gonna be a suicide one. Okay. Shut up. C come closer, and I kill her. Oh gosh. Sorry. But you're not going to get the chance. Okay. Well, that was more serious than usual. Oh, look who's that. I'm reading through the file of an old court case. Yeah, it looked older. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Name, Terry Falls. Charge, kidnapping and murder. Sentence, death penalty. Uh, he also just died. Fugitive moment. Movements. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured Wait. on Eagle Mountain about eight hours after his escape. Why does the name Hawthorne sound familiar? Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before me and I ever met. Okay. Is this going to be like reflection time and we play as Mia? That's exactly it. Six years earlier, Mia Faye's first trial. Alright, well I guess I'm Mia. Here we go. Oh, you, February we don't 16th, get to see anything! 6.24 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby number this 4. This is bull! I okay. don't wanna... I just wanna say, this is so many people, a lot of people love this case. I have a love-hate relationship with this case. I like what it does with the plot. I do not like how this, this kind of starts the trend of, Oh yeah, one of the cases in the game is super short, like the first case. I'm like, no! You're ripping me off! Stop I want doing the this. investigation! Sorry. Ugh! No, nope, we're going right people? to trial. Fine. Who's this? Ugh, I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm going to die. I never should have accepted this case. Ah! Uh, good morning. Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I, I didn't do nothing. I swear, I didn't kill nobody. Terry Falls, my first client. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Sentenced to death five years ago and now a prison escapee. Just relax, Mia. Make small talk and try to relax him. Uh, um, uh, so why did you escape anyway? Uh, uh, LOGA! Ah! I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Uh, I didn't do nothing! I didn't kill nobody! I never, I never lie! I didn't escape from nowhere! Uh, but, Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Uh, sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Um, sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? Uh, uh, Olga! Ah, I'm really, really, really sorry. They sentenced me to die five years ago, but I was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it. I didn't kill her. I, I, I could never do that. If that is the case, the girl jumped off. So... Or the other person shot her. True, that could also be. It could be wrong shot and then she didn't want to admit that. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true. He did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her! She was alive when I left! She was alive! It's true! I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. 
Huh. <laughs> that has to be Godot. <laughs> what tipped you off? The fact that he's exactly... Oh, shoot. Darn it. <laughs> why are you here and why didn't you talk to me? You just I, stood... My finger slipped! <laughs> Doggone it. I need why to did... stop. Having... Wait, I wonder if, like... There was a huge backstory then for why, like, he has this visor. Is it like he had, like, <laughs> both of his eyes removed for terrible surgery? Or, like, he has terrible scars? <laughs> I have the scar. It's really embarrassing. <laughs> Basically. Darn it, I wish this was a future game where I could go back and go back. Ah, yeah. oh, man. Well, what, what did he say? Uh, uh, Mia! Like, <laughs> no. Hey, it looks like you're all alone here now, huh? Or something like that. Why are you here? Why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe you'd like someone to play with. Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? Ha! That old man is probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. Okay, so he has a different name. Okay. Huh. Um, can I point this out? Do you know that name? Diego Armando? All I can think of is Go Diego Go. Yes! So <laughs> you know why? Because we mentioned this in the first case. Diego Armando was uh, Mia's boyfriend who got poisoned by Dahlia. Oh! Wait. How? How is he alive then later? He's not. He returned from the depths of hell <laughs> to do battle with us. That would, <laughs> that would be the most hilarious, just like... I'm the devil now. <laughs> like, come back. No, wait. And also... Maybe he faked his own death. Also... And then he's like, I don't want to be with you. Valerie Hawthorne, Dahlia Hawthorne. Yeah, that's what Connection. it was. Okay. Let's look. We got our attorney's badge. Proof of my pr profession. It's brand new and sparkles in the light. It looks exactly like Phoenix Wright's. <laughs> Valerie's autopsy report? Stabbed in with a knife in the back. Died from blood loss between 4 and 5 p.m. Okay. Profiles. Terry Falls is 25. He's 25. Wow. He has not aged well. No. My client sentenced to death five well, years ago. To he death was 20, at 20 years. Oh, holy cow. I thought he was like in his 30s. No. Escaped from custody two days ago. That's sad. Valerie Hawthorne, 23. She's okay. Like, what? Yeah, apparently. Police officer and the victim. Good the, for her for being The key a police witness officer. in the case against Falls five years ago. And then Diego Armando, 27. Hot shot lawyer, my senior. Maybe, okay. Arrival at the office. A bit small. Maybe he and Godot are siblings. Or maybe like long, um, what is it, doppelgangers? You know what um, I mean, right? Like, like the identical, person... tw identical twins join the Chronicle staff. <laughs> sure. Well, it could be that, or it could be like you know how you meet you meet someone. I think that episode where Candace meets like the oh. princess, and they look exactly <laughs> yeah, like doppelgangers. Doppelganger. It could be like that. Sorry, I didn't say. So, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me. No, no, no. You've got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine, an escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, uh, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Ha! Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Really? However, unlike a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned a reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. What is this, Edgeworth? Genius? Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharpen those claws of yours. It's go time. Well, goodbye. <laughs> You'll be dying soon. A uh, solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest, pla loneliest place. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice... You had, like, the, like, really low voice. I tried to do a gentler one when he's sure. crying, though. I just had a feeling that he was telling the truth. I mean, Mia's pretty sharp on these things. This is also her first case, though. February 16th, 10 a.m., District Court, Courtroom Number 4. What? Court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. We get a different job! <laughs> okay, here you are. <laughs> You should have, like, a... <laughs> for Terry Foles. <laughs> I'm not going to offend all of Canada by doing a bad Canadian no, accent. No, don't do that. Be like, the prosecution would like to do it for Terry Falls. Terry... Owen Wilson, Yeah, like, the you judge. could do Owen, Owen Wilson, the judge. <laughs> well, I'll think about it. The defense is ready, Your Honor. 
The prosecution has been ready for a while, your honor. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a Fire Emblem character. <laughs> what? Look at that suit. Edgeworth the knight. <laughs> <laughs> then he wouldn't be a knight. He would be a <laughs> cavalier, probably. No, cavaliers suck. Uh, you just like well, uh, angered the entire uh, Fire Emblem fan base. They're fine for a bit, and then you get better stuff. It depends on the game. Cavaliers though. are pretty much widely regarded as the greatest. It depends units. on the game that you're playing. If you're playing Awakening, cavaliers. Kind okay, of well, suck. if you're playing Awakening, all the rules are off because you can reclass people as many times sure. as you want, and you can also have mannequins and stuff. Only like. Three four, four maximum. Four? Noe, Nob, Morgan, Tiki. Yeah, if you have those, yeah. Sorry, prosecution's <laughs> finally ready. I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. E yes, your honor. I'm Nia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, your honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone's talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. It's 17. Oh, no, 20, 20, your honor. How old is he? 23? He's 20. 20. He's the same age as Phoenix, so I think 26 now. Yeah, because it's six years ago. So oh, he's 26 okay. now. Guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? Wait, why is he working with her? Come on, Mia, you can't lose. Not to someone younger than you. Um, he's a defense attorney right now. Diego Armando. I thought he was just like, hey, boyfriend, come help me represent the defense. <laughs> he's not her boyfriend right now. Hi, guy who will eventually be my boyfriend yes, that I'm yes. trying to meet. Hmm. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently <laughs> a felon on death row. Now I know what voice I was trying to think of. Do like the terrible Albus Dumbledore. I'm Albus Dumbledore. Dumbledore. <laughs> I'm the judge of the case. <laughs> uh, That's what I thought of. <laughs> Harry Potter, if you ain't the sexiest little boy I've ever laid eyes on. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day of the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death? You got it, kitten. Sure thing, pup. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. Poor thing. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was... A certain witness's testimony. A witness's testimony? Oh, it must have been the same... Yeah. The testimony of Vet Detective Valerie Hawthorne, the person who confronted the criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river. I mean... I was about to be like, maybe she survived! I'm like, no, probably not. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. Okay. So Mrs. Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. That police woman that you just mentioned, that wouldn't be. Exactly. The victim, the same woman <clears throat> that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha! I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago, with only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convicted him. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. It's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. D what? W wait a minute, that's not right. A at least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Watch yourself, Miss Fay. I'm not sure I care for your word choice you or the tone are of your voice. You judge. Your oh, yeah. job is to hear both sides of the case. But at least he's got a good memory compared to the other judge. I don't care. He needs to actually do his job instead of just being like, Well, I think this happened. <laughs> Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why, you? You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who is in charge of the initial investigation of this case. We're gonna see a little case. young gumshoe. Well, he's gumshoe, but he's not young. Oh, although his jacket looks is. looks exactly the same. Witness, state your name and occupation. Gumshoe! Dick Gumshoe! I'm the homicide detective in charge of the case, sir! 
I finally got promoted to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey, ma'am! You got any idea how much work it takes? What is it? You... You're really gorgeous. Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart. It's aching for you. Okay. Detective, pull yourself together and try to be professional. Otherwise, I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. <laughs> okay, I got it. Now, Detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir. Right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. Yes, sir. I gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. Eagle River. This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is the Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there, on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. So that's five yards across. Okay. Hmm, I see. Dusky Bridge map added to the court record. Oh, what I might do? Each episode I might give him a different voice. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> Make him French one episode. Make him something else. Was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a fit coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warned that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honor... If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you wagging your finger at me as though I were some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Um, yes, sir. I just realized, wasn't... Hadn't Edgeworth never lost a case up until when we defeated him that first time? Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to lose this case? Hmm, well, how about that? It's also said in the case file, Phoenix was reading, that Terry Falls was given the death penalty. Yeah, but... But that could have been for the past case. Yeah. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay, now. Listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Trust me and get ready. Yeah. Okay. Summary of the incident. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Okay. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky Bridge at the designated time and met with Mr. Falls. Yeah, that's your first mistake. That's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Yeah. Just don't ever, uh, if somebody you don't know calls you up on the phone and is like, Hey, can you meet me at this park at 2? Don't go. Yeah. That's like the number one thing. Although, Uber exists now, so all bets are off. <sighs> Whatever. Hmm. You don't get a call from the Uber, though, like, yo, I'm going to pick you up at this time, right? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that doesn't that is happen. True. <laughs> you call them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the defense please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Coming right up. I like how, even though Godot is the main prosecutor, we still get Edgeworth as a prosecutor in this game. That yeah. is something that's nice. Everybody likes Edgeworth too much. Hey, hey. Settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm not trembling. It's just cold in here. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean... I mean the defendant, the witness, everyone's a beginner in here. Ha. You got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. I love how Edgeworth's just like, I don't need anybody with me. And Mia's like, oh, I, I need somebody to help me in court. <laughs> um, okay, well, he was taught by Von Karma, so that's probably like, If you're not gonna be ready, then you're not gonna go to- That's not the Von Karma voice. <laughs> that was like Bowser. <laughs> oh, Edgeworth, if you're not gonna be here, you're gonna ruin my family vacation. <laughs> Wait, the Von Karma voice is like, Edgeworth, if you're not gonna be yeah, ready yeah. in the courtroom at the right place, then you're not gonna be in the courtroom at all. <laughs> 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 
Go back yeah. and give me my spa. <laughs> Just remember those court procedure videos you stayed up watching all of last night and that you didn't get to say the, te the text before that. I thought you did. No. Oh. It's cool. Summary of the Something incident. Like hey, guess what? We get to hear, honey! Again. <laughs> An unknown person phoned the circuit. Take that! <laughs> Take that! <laughs> this unknown person, you have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. What? what The defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, a top secret memo when she left on her desk. Ooh. Victim's note added to the court record. Hmm. Oh, we should give it a read. Dusky Bridge map. Boo, 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 boo. Mm -hmm. Uh, victim's note. Confidential. Confidential. Check the court record for details. February 14th, 1.21 p.m. Falls, 4.30 p.m. At that bridge, wear a white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Oh. Wait. Dahlia survived! We're that must have been... Valerie. Yeah. Talk to Dahlia. Dahlia must have been the 14-year-old who fell off the bridge who absolutely survived. What? That doesn't. That's not no, what the note is saying. No, but if they're siblings, and they're related, that could be. It could be that it, that was. I mean, it's possible, but that's not what the note is it's saying. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. <laughs> already off with the conspiracy theories, eh, Marty? <laughs> no, I was thinking a bunch of different ones. It could be that the fourteen-year-old was like the super epic swim team star who just <laughs> the, swam. the Swedish Olympics <laughs> Olympic swim team stayed at Dilbert's house. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but she could swim against, like, swim with the current and then be totally fine. Everyone's like, she's dead! And then she's not. Um, <laughs> Wait, are you saying Dahlia was part of the Swedish women's swim team? <laughs> yeah. No, oh, no. okay. No. Uh, it could be that the, the girl shot the wrong person, didn't want to admit that she shot the wrong person, was like, oh, my pride. It could be that she wanted to shoot that person instead and have the other dude. Hmm. Could be she was on a crazy shooting rampage, just like, everybody <laughs> dies! <laughs> she was playing Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> According to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. <sighs> Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Ha. <laughs> Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. I just wanted to look through everything. It's that detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. He's not cute. He's just like... <laughs> I'm the brooding anime character. All the fan girls love me. <laughs> Not really. The brooding anime character is like the. Uh, I don't really care about anybody in anything. Oh, so Von Karma's the brooding no, anime no, character. No, <laughs> no, because he's like the British. He would be okay in like or on host club. He would be the dude with the glasses. It's like I don't know how we're going to pay for all the damages. I like, don't know what any of those words. You okay. Just used <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's all these different types in this show. There's, like, these two dudes who are twins. There's the main, like, lovey whatever dude. There's, like, the little... There's the guy who looks like a little kid that's, like, cute. There's the dude who's basically, um... So there's the like, Kent, there's the Sane, there's the Rickon. <laughs> yeah, there's the Rickon. There's, um, the Long Kuei. Long Ku. <laughs> and then this guy would basically be, like... This... I'm trying to think of a... Fire Emblem character that would work. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, for anime, you have to explain it in terms of Fire Emblem characters. Because because you don't know anime. Um, uh, if, if we're gonna just keep talking about anime, that's cool. But I thought you should know Sergeant Hoffman went to the Dusky <laughs> Bridge at designated time and met with Mr. Falls. <laughs> oh, whoops. It needs to be like a glasses dude. Who's a dude with glasses? Oh, oh, um, Fire Emblem, the dude with the purple hair from the, from Fire Emblem 7. And he's like, oh, Kanas. Kanas, I think. Yeah, Kinos. he has the monocle, though. He's the monocle? Yeah. That's like Edgeworth. Not really at all, Otherwise, honestly. okay, otherwise it's the male version of Muriel. Okay. <laughs> a bridge up the mountains, but why meet there? 
Uh, because it's a very important place to the defendant, that's why. What do you mean by that? If you remember, five years ago the defendant kidnapped a young girl. He was chased onto a bridge, and it was there that he killed his hostage. What if the bridge just snapped and everybody fell in? <laughs> and that bridge, that place where all of that occurred is, of course, Dusky Bridge. The very place where Sergeant Hawthorne arrested and handcuffed Mr. Falls. Ha. Returning to the scene of the crime. How nostalgic. Cool. That's where he was brutally murdered. Or she was brutally murdered. <laughs> he was murdered, but he came back uh, from yeah, the Oh yeah, she dead. was transgender, you know. <laughs> we already had one of those characters last time. Uh, was the body of the victim discovered right away? Yeah, we were really <laughs> on the ball. We found the criminal within one hour of the murder. It was great! We even got to say, don't move, we've got you surrounded. Wait a second. Isn't there something weird about that? The location was a suspension bridge up in the mountains. So how did they find out about the crime so quickly? They had the... Sergeant Hawthorne must have mentioned the phone call to someone else, right? Ha! If that's what had happened, then she wouldn't have been killed. She never mentioned the police phone call for Mr. Falls, The police phone call? She left a note on her desk about it. If only I had noticed it earlier, maybe she'd still be alive. I wonder why she didn't mention the phone call to anyone. Maybe it's like a... blackmail situation? <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Ace Attorney series loves their black. No, where it's like, I've kidnapped your sister. Meet me on the bridge if you want her alive. Who she's, wants Dolly alive? She's a terrible person. <laughs> I agree, but if you're siblings with her, you might be like, okay, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> no one else will. Nobody loves her, even her siblings Oh wait, maybe are she like, was dating Doug Swallow at the time. She could get her boyfriend to bust her out. Maybe. Maybe? Mr. Falls had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? Hike. What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, no, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm. Wait, so car literally, thieves. I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. So literally, like, Grand Theft Auto, like, came up, to <laughs> threw them out of the car, <laughs> and then took off. <laughs> I want to see an animation of that. That would be great. I would actually play that game if it weren't so expensive on Grand Steam. Grand Theft Auto or Grand Theft Auto Ace Attorney Edition? <laughs> Both. <laughs> is this guy sure he... how? Ugh, is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? <laughs> I can't talk. This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Oh, but you got a photo of the trunk. Oh. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Man, it's Whoa! That... That doesn't look too comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Crime photo added to the court record. The victim, she was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. Ha. <laughs> For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but... The knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. The condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Her? Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange. I get to look! <laughs> She's too tall to fit in there. No, um... There's no blood stains. Have you seen Samus go into a morph ball for him? Okay, but nobody is Samus. Except for Samus. Samus and is contortionists. Samus. But yeah. honestly, like, if it's, if it's a dead body, you can actually stuff it in pretty small places. Pretty weird that there's no blood stains. <laughs> I know from personal experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now. Um, it's weird that the trunk's open. Did he drive off with the trunk open? Or is it like, oh, they found the trunk. This is them opening it. the trunk and finding what's inside and taking a photo of weird it. Weird that there's no blood stains. Also, she um... She stabbed in the back. But and you'd she's see wearing a heavy some coat. blood. You'd see some blood. What did the defendant have to say about this photo? What he always says, ma'am. I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. That's all he says. Nothing? I wouldn't say he did nothing. At the very least, we know he stole a car. True. It's just what he always says, Your Honor. And then he always says, Uh, sorry, I told a little lie. Or something like that. To be fair, if you're kept in, like, death concentration row. death row <laughs> for, like, five years, I feel like that would wreak havoc with your And brain. you spiders, get moving! moving. <laughs> well, in any case, it seems he was caught and arrested. Precisely. Yeah. Edgeworth, if he had longer hair, would look like Marth. 
<laughs> but would be nothing like him in terms oh, of personality. Yeah. That certainly is some impressive police work. Well, no, actually it was way too close for comfort. We set up that checkpoint just after 5 p.m. We figured that Mr. Falls might just try to run. What do you mean it was too close for comfort? The two of them arranged to meet at 4.30 p.m. And it takes approximately 30 minutes to go from the bridge to the checkpoint. Hmm, that was kind of close. Any later, Mr. Falls could have slipped right by. Listen up, kitten. There's a big trap waiting for you in that testimony. A trap? Walk into it carelessly, and it'll leave more than just a flesh wound. Fun, huh? No, it's not! Well, if you want to have any chance at all, you'd better get some more information. And if you're gonna get caught in a trap, it's best to get caught early. You can always look for contradictions afterwards. The ever-famous contradictions. I sure hope I can find some of those. See, I feel like this would have been the case that they should have opened the game with. Not, um... Uh, not because of the names, just because of how they were like, here we go, here's our trial period, here's our thing. Versus, yeah. Interesting. Mm. That's weird. I'm guessing it's the photo. I don't see anything strange, do you, anyway? <laughs> no, I don't! <laughs> oh, <it's interesting. laughs> um. Oh, yeah. Edgeworth 20. <laughs> Look at that Don't face. Dumped a genius. Look at that face. He's like... <laughs> it looks like he has, like, a bad smell under his nose perpetually. I... His He's eyes, also wearing a raincoat. His... He looks slightly stoned. The way that I'm <laughs> looking at him. Because his eyes are kind of, like, a little wide and not really enough pupil. And <laughs> if your eyes don't have enough pupils in them. Um, you need one per eye. Okay, but seriously, we should actually try and present something. Okay. I don't know what we would present. Well, with. we have five pieces of evidence, and we can probably rule out the attorney's back. Okay, <laughs> it's probably stabbed with the knife in the back, died from blood loss between 4 and 5 p.m. Well, it would probably be between 4.30 and 5.30 p.m., actually, because of the <sighs> time that they met. Bridge located 40 feet above. There's the car. <laughs> the car's always there. And then they go. The bridge is out, which is terrible design. On, <laughs> yes, on they the... they intentionally designed the bridge to. No, be what crossed. I'm saying is, you should normally when a bridge is out, you rope it off like nobody can go across here because it's dangerous, and they're just like. It's also in the middle of nowhere, you so they could jump. It's fine. <laughs> Wearing white scarf for identification. Where's her scarf? I don't know. That's a problem. Witness! <laughs> well, what is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry. I totally forgot what I was going to say. This is... This is the first time I've ever actually had to address someone like that. Ugh. You should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not too sure I like this. Hmm. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Ugh, come on, Mia. Shake it off. You're a, li you're a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> lawyer. Detective. Y yes, ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it. Is that correct? D yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The note? It very clearly says, wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like, thus this special request. Ah, I, um... I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it! Ah! Maybe it's stuffed in the muffler, like last time. <laughs> <laughs> the caller told her to wear it to identify herself, so I'd expect she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? <sighs> I see the defense is a little... lacking. The scarf you are searching for so desperately. Is this the one, perchance? But where did you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. 
I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation and illegally take the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal um, satchel. That is illegal. It's the safest place I know. That Why have we heard that before? <laughs> yeah. Like every prosecutor ever. He has like more of a stink face at 20 than he does at 26. <laughs> I think he's got the thinner face. That's part of it. Huh. That hotshot sure has a flair for the dramatic. Yeah, nobody date him. It's not exactly white as the caller requested. But as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. Dude, for all we know, you could have just been wearing that instead of your corsage. Corsage? Cravat. Cravat. Corsa every time! Yeah, I think literally every time. <laughs> Cravat. Okay. Anyway. It could just be like, well, I need to re replace my corvat, and then like... Corvette? I said corvat! <laughs> it's cravat, not corvat. <laughs> I need to replace anyway. my corvette. I have so many, because I'm so rich. Because no. I met you with. What I'm saying is, he could have owned that scarf and been like, Ugh, whoops, I spilled some ice cream on it. <laughs> well, it's fine, I'll just use it as evidence. <laughs> well, this is old, this is old you Edgeworth. You totally fake this Where evidence. Edgeworth was less scrupulous back then, so... Huh, it looks like it spent some time in the mud or the chocolate ice cream. <laughs> Not surprising. I ate the chocolate ice cream before picking it up, and it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Edgeworth. He was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Scarf added to the court record. Now, if the attorney for the defense has finished embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is all right with you, isn't it, Miss Faye? Boy, would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck. <laughs> Very good. Now if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business. The prosecution moves to establish conclusively, and with hard evidence, that Miss Hawthorne and Mr. Falls did indeed meet on the bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what occurred there, with my pointer finger. <laughs> that sounds quite promising, but I don't know how I feel about your pointer <laughs> finger. Can't wait to hear all about it. Ugh, <laughs> oh, everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. I think we're just gonna lose this. Genius, huh? <laughs> Actually, if you get a game over, it just unlocks the final case. Yeah. <laughs> Events on Dusky Bridge. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows her wearing the scarf, sir. Wait, but the witness is... The witness is on the bridge, isn't it? No, no, that's no, the, the bridge. She's on, like, the cliff near it. She's like, And wait, somehow wait, Valerie wait. Hoffman didn't see her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I guess I should just snap a picture of this event happening. It was drizzling that day. Unfortunately, it's a little too hard to see what's going on. It looks like Carmen Sandiego <laughs> met a jailed dude. <laughs> that's what <laughs> Anyway, <it looks> like. <laughs> the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Okay. Hmm... Looking at this photo, you really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It's also broken. It's about a 40 feet drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. What? Aha! A potential witness. So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your Honor. Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel her to testify. What? Third party who can take pictures. It better not be Lana. <laughs> I just have to say this. When you say Lana is delicate. No, but maybe <laughs> she became more outgoing. This is pulled before her character development off screen. She's like, I I'm Lana Hart. I'm though. Lana Hart, and, and I really like to take pictures of aliens. <laughs> and then she gets really excited. Um, otherwise, otherwise, who might it be? It could be somebody new. It could also be somebody from a previous case. Could or a future case. Or a future case. April, May. Could be April, May. Could be. Yeah, it can't be previous case, but I'm saying like previous case that we've played. Yeah, that's true. Hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about Lana Hart potentially being a witness. <laughs> Witnesses photo edited. Oh, I gotta say, record. she's come back way too much. So yeah, this is the okay. At the end of the second game, she'd come back twice. Not appeared twice. Come back, back twice. twice. <laughs> so as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? 
Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Not again! That's not fair! I haven't even done my cross-examination yet! Hmm... What do you mean, hmm? Alright, well that's... I think we're gonna have to leave wow, it the judge for this stinks. episode. Yeah, the, I don't like this judge. I like the old judge. He might be incompetent, but at least he's... Nice and knows how to do his job. No, nah, well, not always, no. Okay. Anyhow. He isn't <laughs> just like, well, I think he's guilty, so... Bee! That's true. Anyhow, thanks for watching, everybody. We're gonna end it here. Tune in next time. We will probably finish cross-examining Gumshoe. And maybe we'll just see who a witness might be. There might be more than one. I hope. We'll have to wait and see. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless. Thank <laughs> you.